If you're ready to move past the extreme basics of cold email, such as buying multiple domains, buying multiple emails, warm up, randomized sending, and all the things you've likely seen on other YouTube videos, then this video is for you. We're gonna talk about what an email service provider is, considerations you need to take regarding shared versus dedicated IPs, and some other tips and tricks that I found from sending cold emails for nearly a decade. So let's go ahead and get into the video. So the first question to answer here is what is an email service provider? Essentially, an email service provider is the technical backend for sending emails. They are responsible for managing mail servers that get your emails routed to a recipient. So examples of this are gonna be Google, Microsoft, Zoho, as well as others such as Amazon and even smaller ones you haven't normally heard of. So that is a email service provider. Some important notes when it comes to email service providers are they have to manage their own reputation. So an email service provider can actually get blacklisted. It's not just an individual sender, but an email service provider as a whole. And what this means is they need to keep their reputation among all their users to an average point where it is acceptable. So if they have way too many spammers, then they can have issues where all of our users start going to spam, even people that are using email in a normal manner, and then they're gonna lose users and lose revenue. So they are gonna be incentivized to keep the average quite high among their users, so this never turns into an issue. And to do this, email service providers have a lot of filters to prevent what they consider spam. And cold emails can be considered spam if they're not done right. For example, you can see here the Microsoft Defender Office 365 protection stack, where they have quite a few measures to prevent potential spam. Now, if you are really deep in cold email and want to send high volume, I recommend looking more into this on your own because there's a lot of good things you can learn here about what you're not allowed to do. That way you can get around it and make sure your emails always land in the inbox. So this brings up a topic, which is if tools like Outlook and Google are incentivized from keeping me away from sending high volumes, why don't I use an email service provider that's incentivized to allow me to use cold email? And the good news is there are some options for this, but there's considerations we need to take. Now, in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about InfraForge and MailForge, which are two tools I think you should consider for your cold email campaigns when you're trying to diversify your sending stack. So let's go deeper down this rabbit hole. We first need to understand what a dedicated IP is and what a shared IP is and which tools have what. So all of your big email service providers such as Outlook or such as Google have shared IPs. This means they have thousands, tens of thousands, millions, whatever it may be of IPs and they are in charge of handling reputation. But because they are shared, other people are gonna be using those same IPs. So they are incentivized to prevent you from sending spam because they want to keep the average reputation among their IPs very high. So what if there was a tool where you still have a shared IP system, but the person who owned the ESP was incentivized to allow you to do cold email? meaning you still have the same risk that come with a shared IP, meaning a shared reputation of other people using the same platform. However, you didn't have all of that defender stack that goes out against you when sending emails. Well, this is essentially what MailForge is. It allows you to set up cold email infrastructure where you do have shared IPs, but the actual platform itself is not going against you from sending cold emails. So that would be an example of a shared IP that is friendly for cold email. Now, on the other hand, made by the same founder versus InfraForge. InfraForge essentially allows you to have your own dedicated IP. This means it's shared with no one else, but you are entirely, entirely in control of your own reputation on this IP. Keeping this in mind, I wanna talk about the pros and cons of each. So let's talk about your major big ESPs, Google, Outlook. Let's talk about resellers, dedicated IPs, and also shared IPs. Starting off with a dedicated IP, an example of this would be InfraForge. This is where you can have your own IP that you are entirely responsible for maintaining. Now, if you do not know how to properly maintain this IP, this can be catastrophic to your campaigns, 
because not only will you be penalized, you'll be penalized even harsher because you don't have other accounts sharing an IP to pull up the average of your rotation. So these can work really well if you know what you're doing and you also get good engagement rates. We have certain clients where their natural response rates to offers, not because they're bad, just less in demand, would not be high enough that we could maintain good deliverability on a dedicated IP. But we have other clients where we'll naturally get a five to 15% response rate, which is very high engagement. And because of that, they can excel on a dedicated IP because we don't have other people pulling them down. And it's important to understand how engagement rate affects here because it's only you in charge of your own IP. And if you can pull it off, fantastic. If you can't, it can lead to your campaigns doing even worse than if you did the same thing on a shared IP. Now, on the other hand, we have shared IPs and resellers. Resellers are people that get good deals by purchasing emails in bulk and then very responsible for their own IPs. Now, this is not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing. It's just a thing. It depends on how it's carried out. So if you are going to purchase emails from a reseller, you want to make sure there's somebody that has good integrity and is managing their IP pool very well because essentially the individual hurts the collective. Now, if you have a lot of people with good reputations, this can be a positive. If you don't, this can be a negative. Now, another pro is gonna be this will save you money. And what we generally do here with shared IPs, not considering big players like Outlook or Google, smaller shared IPs, we normally look at this as a way to diversify. So we'll add this on once we already have a campaign that's working well, just to have some more diversification among our system and maybe lower cost a little bit as we scale. But this is something we'll do after we have a solid foundation. So what about the big players that pretty much everybody uses and starts with? Your Googles and Outlooks. Well, I think that's a good place to start for most people and probably the first thing you want to do before further diversifying. But if you are a bit more advanced starting with a dedicated IP or understanding why diversifying into a shared IP from a reseller could be good is an option. But if you're just starting out, most people should probably go with a big player. Now, there are some downsides to this because they have additional filters beyond just normal blacklists to make sure they don't end up on a blacklist themselves. So they are working against you essentially. And one of the ways we're doing this is snowshoeing. Snowshoeing is where they stop you from setting up multiple emails and domains from one person because they don't want you to do that, which is exactly what we do in cold email. So we need to hide this. We need to hide this by using different IPs, credit cards, names, uh, accounts. And this is only at a certain scale this becomes prevalent. If you're only sending a few thousand emails, it's probably fine but it can become more complicated. Where using a tool like InfraForge or MailForge, where they're okay with this behavior because they're made for it, can be really nice and convenient sometimes. Um, you also need to show human-like behavior because unlike Insta InfraForge or MailForge, you really, really, really do not want to get flagged as someone who's doing this because they could shut you down because they're incentivized to not have your other users go to a blacklist. So you need to have a very solid foundation of different identities, phone numbers, and IPs to make sure that as you scale, especially, you are not caught and shut down. So with all this technical stuff in your head now, what should you do? Well, to start, you should diversify your sending accounts. If you're using InfraForge, you should probably also use Google or Outlook. If you're using MailForge, same thing. If you scaled on Outlook or Google, I'd recommend testing a tool like InfraForge or MailForge in addition. So you should look at diversifying your sending accounts. That way you're never too reliant. You also wanna be mindful of how your reputation is being managed and act accordingly. If you're on a shared IP or dedicated IP, this should change the actions you're doing with your cold emails. And ultimately, you wanna make sure you have a great foundation in place. Nothing is gonna be a great relevant offer, as well as doing other essentials, such as diversifying your sending accounts at low volume, not having too many patterns and trying to look human-like, and just overall having a good reputation for things such as warm-up. And in conclusion, make sure you're sending enough volume and testing. Not only testing your copy, offers, and targets, but testing tools. R&D should be a critical part of cold email, especially as you scale to higher volumes. Now, I thank you for watching this video. I know it's not quite as exciting, but for those very serious of cold email, I think this is very important. So if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments. And a thank you to InfraForge and MailForge for assisting in this video. I will see you in the next one.